if you have a high premises pregnancy like this is hard i don't feel strong i don't feel tough i'm just determined because what else can i be defeated welcome to hd designs crochet hgdc i'm heather a designer of granny square patterns for my tribe I went from corporate lawyer being told what to do to full-time self-employed crochet designer doing what pleases my soul. Now I also champion Yarny Creatives just like you to build income streams from your passion. Join me on my mission to change the world one crochet pattern at a time. Hey tribe, how are you? This vlog is a little bit different. Um, I started a vlog a couple of Mondays ago and I wanted to show more of my day to day um, because I am 35 weeks pregnant and I have not had the typical pregnancy and there's been quite a lot going on with that. And I've been putting up loads of vlogs and I've been showing you my crochet time and the things that I'm working on. And um, I've been getting a lot of comments like, I'm so glad you're doing well and you're feeling good and you're managing to like be productive. I'm really out of breath. <laughs> and yeah, I am managing to do things and I am managing to be productive, but also those there's a whole other side that I haven't really been showing and I wanted to be really transparent and honest with all of that. When I put up the crochet with me vlogs and like things like that, you're literally seeing 20 minutes of my week and you're seeing the best 20 minutes of my week as well. Um, and I haven't been showing the harder parts of it, which is like, the raw emotions, the struggles, the things like that, I haven't really been showing them. And I don't want anybody else that's going through um, like a tough pregnancy to compare themselves to me and think, she's doing all these things, why can't I? And also I don't want you to think that everything's just hunky-dory in the background. So. I decided I was going to record like going to my appointments and things like that and it just so happened that I made that decision Sunday night and that following Monday I had a hospital appointment and I went to that hospital appointment and I was told that today which is May the 3rd that I would finally get my mental health assessment to provide support during this pregnancy and that just unlocked a whole tsunami of emotions like everything at the checkup was pretty much fine like i just had warning levels of dehydration warning level of infection like i could be i could have an infection coming and things like that but i didn't have to stay in hospital so it was a pretty good appointment but being told that I was finally getting that assessment just unlocked so many emotions. I think because I'm very much a person, I just keep going, keep going, keep going. I get through the event and then after it's happened, I then process. And I feel like because I was told that that help was coming, I suddenly could breathe and start processing what had been going on. And there's been quite a lot of relief that that assessment is going to be taking place. But then also a lot of like anger, frustration and just pain about the way this pregnancy has been um so if you're not aware i have a condition called hyperemesis it means extreme sickness extreme nausea it has completely dominated this entire pregnancy i have pretty much spent a year of my life in this room because i had covid beforehand and then i went into this pregnancy and i was largely bed bound and then with the fatigue rearing its head the last two, three weeks. I have spent a lot of time in here again. Um, 
I hope. But I was really, really hurt and angry and frustrated and just feel so let down because I needed that help at nine weeks. And here I am at 35 weeks being told that the help would come. As it happens, I've actually had a call this morning to say the person that's doing the assessment isn't very well. So it's been cancelled and that they will get in touch with me when they're back to rearrange. In all honesty, I don't think I'm going to get any mental health support before this baby arrives because I'm 35 weeks and two or three days today. Baby could choose to arrive at any point. <laughs> um, full time is 37 weeks, so I'm close to that. And in the UK, they strongly advise you don't go past 42 weeks so i just don't think that help's gonna come before the baby gets here and like i've made peace with that because between me brad god church my community my family my friends we've got me through but also i'm just so deeply hurt that i have been left to rot in this room for so so long without that support and just because of that, how much it's aggravated the experiences that I've had. And it's, it's such a deep topic as well, because we're truly blessed in the UK that NHS, our National Health Service, is free. So I don't pay for the medical support that I get. Albus, can you get your bum out the shop, please? The NHS, our National Health Service, is free, so I don't pay for the medical care that I get, which is a true blessing. But also the NHS is under a huge amount of strain with financial cuts, COVID, staffing and all these other issues. And I am definitely feeling the, the brunt of that. So I wanted to record a more honest vlog showing some more sides of that Um don't get me wrong, there's loads of like good moments within the days, but there's also a lot, a lot, a lot of bad, hard, tough moments. <laughs> I'm stood here in our bedroom because the day after I had that hospital appointment, this doggy had an operation so that he has been castrated because he got banned from his daycare because he was showing too much of an interest in the lady dogs and they wouldn't accept him back unless he got castrated so we've booked that in in like a rush because we need him to be fully healed and okay so when baby arrives he can go to daycare and that's also where his kennels are so that he can be taken care of if I'm in hospital for extended period of time so that Brad can be with me and we don't need to worry about him. Um, long story short, he popped open his castration wound, which has meant that he's needed 24 seven supervision. I'll be because he keeps trying to lick it and then that stops it from healing. So now, thankfully, the wound has closed and we are getting very, very close to the point where we will be able to leave him unattended and he won't be able to do any damage. Um, but we've still got another three, four days of that at least. He's got his noisy chew. We're just going to have to deal with the noise because I tried to record in the yarn room, the next room, and I kept coming in and he was licking what he shouldn't be licking. So, yeah, he's been with me 24-7 for quite a few days now like 24 7 he's been sleeping with me and then brad's either been sleeping on the air bed is in the cot at the moment he's either been sleeping on that downstairs or at the end of the bed and then the last couple of nights we managed to get all three of us in the bed and him not like completely take over because when he's sleeping he likes to lie with like his head on the pillow which is cute but he doesn't curl up like he's huge look at the, look at how much of our bed he takes up because he's like 30 kilos. <sighs> yeah, you can huff. You can huff. So we've finally taught him to like sleep on the bottom bit because I don't 
my feet don't come to the, all the way to the end of the bed there's a gap there for him so we're kind of getting sleep kind of um the other option is for me to sleep on the sofa and brad and i'll be sleep up here or brad sleep downstairs um but i can't sleep on the air bed because it isn't very padded so it, it's no good for when you're on your side and i need to be on my side because So yeah, this is basically the introduction to the vlog. Um, some of the scenes you might find a little bit upsetting, like I've tried to capture really raw as it happens footage, which is a little bit weird thing to do because I, I just want to hide away and retreat when I'm feeling like that. But I do think it's really important to show it. So there's like quite a few scenes where I'm obviously upset, obviously crying, um, and I basically, have spent like the last 10 days I decided that I was going to step away from social media and that I just needed to spend a lot of time journaling resting and that there's just things in the house that needed to get done so that should baby arrive we're ready and prepared so um like the cot's gone up we've sorted out we've packed baby's hospital bag we've sorted out baby's clothing um and then Brad's taken me tonight to go shopping to get my bag sorted. Fun fact, I the fatigue has been so bad at the moment that um, I'm just, I basically, I need to be supervised everywhere I go, which isn't a whole other thing that I find frustrating because I've gone from being like living alone for five years, going abroad by myself to now like, I need someone to literally chaperone me everywhere I go. It's, yeah because Albie needs to be supervised. Brad's twins coming around tonight to sit with him so we can't lick his knackers. <laughs> so that the dog can't lick his own knackers. <laughs> oh, just so that we can go shopping. I've spent like 10 days in bed. Um, pretty much not moving, not really doing a whole lot. Just listening to what my body needs, which has just been rest and food has always been a difficult one because hello hyperemesis but just trying um quite a lot of messages to my mentor so i got paired up with like a buddy from a hyperemesis charity and that's been invaluable because i've definitely found that with friends and family obviously they want to help so they'll ask me how are you feeling and i'll say i'm really struggling today it's just hard and I'm struggling and they will want to make that better and they'll want to fix it I totally get that so then they'll like give advice like you should try this why don't you do this why don't you do that um and also then they'll be like look at the positives blah 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 and I find I then feel even more isolated because one I'm struggling to get anything done like anything today is the first day in 10 days that I've put makeup on, got like, I've actually showered, done my hair, put makeup on, got dressed. If I'd have done any of this in the last 10 days, I'd have had to get straight back into bed. Um, and then when people say, well, you need to do this, 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 and this, you're then adding to a huge to-do list that I already haven't done. Um, also, quite often a lot of that advice just isn't helpful because they might not necessarily understand the situation. They don't understand what I'm going through. So then I feel like I spend even more time trying to explain and I feel even more lonely then because they don't get it. And then also the question was, how do you feel? Not what are you positive about? And that's two different answers from me. And I have found one of the hardest things throughout is being that the judgment from people and also people telling me what I should and shouldn't be doing all the time from medical professions to random people on social media to friends and family to whoever you should do this you should do that but you shouldn't do it like this it's just so much noise and really sometimes all I need is for someone just to say you will feel like that I felt like that 
it's okay, it's gonna get better. And my mentor is really good at that because she's had one of these pregnancies. So I messaged her the other day, like, I'm just so tearful, I'm so exhausted. Like, is this normal? And am I gonna get through this? And I've got all of these worries in my head, all of these what if questions that I need to voice and I need to speak to somebody about without them being like, don't be negative or I, I just need to talk about them. And she's been really good at being like, this was sharing what her experience was, reassurance and just somebody that understands and that's made a huge, huge difference. And I'm so grateful for that. So yeah, I recorded when I came back from hospital and I recorded a few clips that are a bit harder to see, but I want to put them out there. I want to include it because I think it's really important to share all sides of this. You try to fit two humans in that bed with him now. So I'm going to take him downstairs, supervise toilet times. He hates being on his lead in the garden, so I end up having to take him out for like a walk, like a very gentle, very short walk, just so he'll go do his business. And I really want an ice lolly. And I'm going to put all the footage together of the last 10 days or so, just so you can see what's been going on. Um, as I said, didn't really want to knit or crochet. And all I've done in that time is make two sleeves of a baby cardigan and a few swatches. That's it. Hmm. Monday, 25th of April. It's about one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, this morning I had my clinic appointment at the hospital. So every second Monday I go there and they check on Bump, they check on me. Um, I can speak to my consultant about any concerns I have or if I'm struggling with anything. Um, I was quite apprehensive about this one because the last time I went, I ended up being admitted for fluids because the level of dehydration I'd reached was um affecting baby and yeah i'm just it's just a lot from like january up until march it was like weekly blood tests weekly hospital visits um and quite a few of my days would just like be absorbed by hospital time and now it's like every fortnight um so that's much much better but last time I went into hospital, I thought I'd be there for a few hours. You just don't know what's going to happen at each of these appointments. Like, the appointments that Brad's taken me, we've been in and out within an hour. And then weeks where I think I feel okay, I'm there for like two, three days. It's just, yeah, it's hard to keep up with it all. Um, it's not just the time in hospital, it's the impact after that because you don't sleep much when you're in hospital there's constant check constant interruptions so then my sleep cycle is completely out of whack and it takes a few days for that to get back in track all those things but then on top of that like the psychological side of it it's just a lot so i was feeling apprehensive about this morning and i'm getting close to the end now getting close to the end now had it not been for the pandemic, I would be induced at 37 weeks. Because of COVID, there's staff shortages. I don't really want to go into the ins and outs of it all right now. I don't really want to talk about it all. I've just got it in my head that I'm just going to keep going until baby arrives. So I've not got long left. And I've done 34 weeks. So if there's another eight weeks to come, I can do that as well. I'm gonna get it done just doesn't making the days any easier if you think that this is like day 290 something of being like this if you had a hangover or norovirus or f food poisoning for 200 something days over eight months like 
think about when you've had like your worst hangover or your wor worst food poisoning stomach bug and somebody comes into you and says i know you've just vomited but here's this insert this smelly food you must eat it because it's going to make you feel better and then all you do is vomit like it isn't a case of trying harder or choosing and i, I get quite a lot of comments like if is the sickness not controlled but high premises isn't just sickness it's also nausea and it's weight loss and it's dehydration it's malnutrition and even though the tablets are doing a pretty strong job at preventing the sickness it doesn't stop it it doesn't stop the food aversions and it doesn't stop the nausea so if if you imagine that all day long your mouth keeps filling up, you know that feeling as if you're about to be sick. And so your entire body gets flooded with adrenaline because it's preparing for you to be sick. But that happens all day long, 24-7, 200 something days in. That has a huge impact on your body of just wearing you down, making you extremely drained. I've put my entire life on hold for almost nine months now my business my personal life it's impacted me emotionally physically mentally spiritually financially it's had a huge impact on me and brad a lot of my week looks like this i feel like a sense of loss of All the joys I thought I would have and that you'd normally have in a pregnancy. Normal. I'm just ready to be done now. I don't feel strong. I don't feel tough. I'm just determined because... What else can I be? Defeated? <laughs> Lots of feelings. I've just frustration anger exhaustion and just this is so isolating and it's so draining because it's really tiring it's really tiring to like keep up that energy as if everything is okay and i know i will be okay again but it's really important to acknowledge at the time that, like, this is hard. And you've got people telling you what you should feel. You've got people telling you what you should be doing, how you should be making this better for yourself. But ultimately, but ultimately, it's me that's got to get through it. It's me that's got to do it. It's my body. It's my pregnancy. It's my feelings, it's my experience. I have so much to be grateful for. There's so many positives. I know I'm gonna get through this, but also it's just so, so important for me to also say this side of it. There's also gonna be repercussions of this after. It's not a case of babies here and everything's fine. Like my body's gonna need time to heal. I'm gonna have a lot to process. I'm gonna need quite a bit of support. Friendships and relationships are going to look a lot different. I'm going to be navigating a business with a newborn and I need to figure out what maternity leave looks like for me because originally I was going to take quite a chunk of time off but now by the time baby's here, by the time baby arrives, I basically wouldn't, will have been out of work for like a year. And if I was in a conventional job, I'd be, I'd probably be on maternity leave by now. Um, but the beauty of my job is that crochet knitting is just such a love for me um, that I get to carry on doing bits. So I feel quite blessed about that. So it keeps me occupied and it, it gives me something to focus on. 
it's just these little things that keep the days going, keep me going through the days. Pajamas, food, nap. Keep going. I've got this far and I can do this. I don't need to think about the days ahead. I just need to get through today. I have the strength for today and the strength for tomorrow will be provided. Keep going. Another day closer. Keep going. Keep going. Hey tribe, welcome back. It's Tuesday, uh, the day after you saw me. <laughs> I spent today in bed, which is where I am currently. Um, I have been knitting. I'm working on a swatch for Baby Taylor's Coming Home cardigan. It's the last thing on my list to do. Um, and it needs doing now because we're getting close. So I'm swatching for that. Um, we took Albie to the vets last night and he's basically like popped open part of his wound and he's on some antibiotics and we've got to be really strict with him and really stop him from moving about. Not now because... <laughs> going to be glued to mine or your hip. So I've shut the bedroom door which I never ever do and I've just had him up here with me pretty much all day and then when he was getting restless I took him out. He needs to go out in the garden on the lead and to like channel some of that energy to let him siphon it off and um, we did a little bit of treat training and i also watered the garden while i did it so that uh just getting a couple of things done yeah so i do feel better for a day of bed rest um i've been watching some hypnobirthing classes i bought like a course and again, it's on my list of things to do to prep for baby. So I started that today. I was really apprehensive about it. But so far, so good. Um, what else have I been watching? Oh, I watched a replay of a webinar that was on yesterday that I didn't join live. So that was really good. Um, I love anything like business related. So... That was nice to watch and then I've just been watching some of the channels I'm subscribed to. I love watching like um, tiny house living and those that grow their own gardens and like live off the land um, and small business owners. So I've just been catching up on a few of those. Um, Brad should be home like in the next 10 or so minutes and then he's going to take Albs to the toilet time and then... I'm going to shower and Brad and I like to watch an episode every evening and at the moment we're going through Married at First Sight Australia so we'll watch the next episode on that and then an early night. Um, last night Brad slept downstairs and I had Albie in bed with me because he doesn't fit in his crate with his cone on but he's not great sleeping out of his crate um and brad doesn't do very well with him wriggling about and like he snores he moves about a lot he makes a lot of noise whereas that doesn't really bother me so he slept next to me so he's basically been with me like almost 24 hours now but he's chilled he's happy so let's get brad home get fed showered back into bed <laughs> 